Yo, what is going on guys? Troy Adishin here, superhuman to you, and I'm so excited to get into this topic. It is so fascinating to me. We're gonna cover, is there a genetic disease that could be the secret behind many people's incredible muscle size and muscle strength? So I'm gonna show you guys in just a second some insane images on the screen of extremely muscular animals, and in fact, you're about to see the most ripped and shredded toddler well, not toddler, but a few years older than a toddler that you've ever seen in your entire life. You ain't got no games. You ain't lift no weights. So, there is in fact a genetic disease that I'm gonna explain to you guys that could be the explanation behind many champion bodybuilders and many freaks of nature that we're about to show on the screen. So let's dive right into this. So take a look, first of all, at this insanely muscular dog. Like, holy crap, that does not look like my family dog from childhood. So this dog has nearly twice as much muscle mass as every other dog walking around. Why is that? Now, next up, this is my personal favorite. Take a look at my boy, Roger the Kangaroo. Roger the Kangaroo has, I think, 19 inch biceps. He's got a shredded chest. He's got full pec muscles. He looks like he could whoop some serious ass out in the Aussie Outback. Next up, take a look at this giant cow. Now, this is the most impressive one. This cow looks like it walks around with easily three to 400 pounds of muscle mass. It doesn't work out at all. How do you explain this? And then last but not least, take a look at this kid. This kid is more shredded, more aesthetic, and more muscular than half the guys who compete on the NPC Physique Tour. Now, what is the reason behind this? How is this dog, this cow, this kangaroo, and this young kid so incredibly muscular with so little effort when there are guys who spend three, four years in the gym who don't have nearly close to as much muscle size as even this young kid? That is exactly what we're going to dive into in depth and detail in this video. Alright guys, so the secret to superhuman strength in superhuman muscular size. I mean, take a look at this kid. There's obviously something not normal about him. So muscle size actually has a genetic limit. So you guys gotta understand that your muscles are under strict control of something called myostatin. And this myostatin level dictates how large a muscle can actually become. But the crazy thing about this is, and what I'm gonna get into is gonna be the main core concept of the video, is this myostatin level is different for everybody. Now, is the myostatin, uh, excuse me, as your muscle uh, reaches its genetic limit, myostatin inhibits further muscle growth. So myostatin, limited or absent, the muscle has almost limitless potential, guys. So, um, I mean, just take a look at this kid. I'm gonna go through a couple more crazy images, but, um, what you gotta understand is this was first discovered in these things, uh, these Belgian blue cows. So they realized these Belgian blue cows had a deletion of something called the GDF8 gene. So this is a Belgian blue cow right here. This guy right, yeah, this one right here. This is a Bel, I mean, holy crap. So they found out that this Belgian blue cow has a deletion of something called the GD8F gene. So GDF8 is a precursor to myostatin, so myostatin couldn't be produced in this cow. This cow wasn't doing squats. This cow doesn't work out. This cow is comp has a completely normal diet and take a look at it. Now take a look, here's another one. Here's another Belgian blue cow. I mean, take a look at that thing. That thing is a beast. Oh my God. <laughs> so. You have to understand that there's low levels of myostatin and then there's non-existent myostatin. Now, chances are in most really successful pro bodybuilders, they have low levels of myostatin, but there's also an extremely, extremely like one in a billion genetic disease where your body has no myostatin. So let me show you an example of what that would look like. So we have, uh, <laughs> this is Roger the kangaroo, this famous Australian kangaroo. I mean, look at that. Roger is a beast, guys. Holy crap. So as you can see, this kangaroo has non-existent levels of myostatin. I mean, take a look at the biceps on this thing. And then we look at this dog right here. I think this is another case of having non-existent myostatin. So the lower levels of myostatin equal higher potential for muscle growth. So that would explain, I would almost guarantee that someone like Phil Heath 
I think he's won Mr. Olympia six or seven times. I guarantee you he probably has non-existent levels of myostatin. I mean, even though he's obviously not natural, he's taken a lot of drugs, he has a perfect diet, perfect training regimen. There's a lot of people who have that regimen that don't look anything like this. So if I had to guess, Phil Heath definitely has very low levels of myostatin. Here's a guy who was actually medically diagnosed with very low levels of myostatin. Take a look at this guy's quads. This is a cyclist with like 30 inch quads. Take a look at this freak. He actually had to stop working out his upper body because it was getting so muscular and it was making him too heavy and taking away his speed on his, uh, he's a professional cyclist, so I guess you don't want to be too heavy, but the guy, I mean, one more shot. The guy is a freaking monster. And then even look at someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is Arnold, I believe, at 17 years old. Take a look at how big he is with just like two years of training under his belt. I mean, he looks more developed than most guys with five or six years of training. So um, this one, this kid's I think called Little Hercules. I think he was diagnosed with having low levels of myostatin as well. So as you can see, the lower levels of myostatin is actually the, uh, the best genetic gift you could possibly have when it comes to bodybuilding. But as you guys are about to find out, you can even have high levels of myostatin and reach a pretty insane physique because it takes a very long time to reach even close to your genetic potential. So I brought up this article actually on, uh, actually no, I'm gonna come back. Oh, so they actually had these uh, first genetically engineered dogs and they made these dogs really muscular. And all they did here, they see they have a genetic mutation that can cause the dogs to build up twice the muscle mass of normal beagles. And all they did was inhibit, where did it go here? Where did it go? Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, so right here, by, by removing copies of a gene called the myostatin gene, the scientists created dogs with a genetic mutation that can cause the dogs to build up twice the muscle mass of normal beagles. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. And then if you look here, even on Wikipedia, this is, uh, you can search about this on Wikipedia. So myostatin related muscle hypertrophy is a rare genetic condition categorized by reduced body fat and increased skeletal muscle size. Affected individuals have up to twice the usual amount of muscle mass in their bodies. They also tend to have increased muscle strength. Myostatin released muscle hypertrophy is not known to cause many medical problems and affected individuals are intellectually normal. So, I mean, a pretty awesome disease to have. It's got no side effects. You build a ton of muscle and you have low levels of body fat, insane levels of strength. So I thought this was really fascinating. Wanted to share it with you guys. All right guys, so the purpose of the video wasn't to frustrate you and make you feel like you might have really bad genetics because there's many different genetic factors besides having low levels of myostatin. And if you're like most guys, chances are you just wanna have a really aesthetic, attractive looking physique. And you can have low levels of myostatin and actually have bad aesthetic genetics, guys, because think about it. I've seen guys who are really big and they have these giant thick waists and they just don't look aesthetic. So some of the best physiques that I've seen in the world, like guys like Lazar Angelov and some of the most aesthetic guys in the world, I guarantee you they don't have very low level low levels of myostatin but they are aesthetic they look great they have like ideally what every guy wants to look like so just because you're not like Arnold Schwarzenegger once at 17 years old or you look like Phil Heath after five years of training don't get frustrated because this channel is all about giving guys the best advice on how to get aesthetic and maximize your genetic potential for you so thank you guys so much for watching I'm gonna cover a lot more of these little sciencey topics because I find them super fascinating I'm gonna do a completely separate video on genetics because like I said there's five different levels of genetics there's vascularity there's aesthetic proportions there's muscle belly uh, muscle belly size there's body fat genetics having a really fast metabolism being able to get really lean easily there's vertical jump and athlete um, genetics so so many different genetic factors go into it and like I said just because you don't look like Ronnie Coleman or Phil Heath after a couple years of training does not mean you can't reach your goals so thank you guys so much for watching make sure you subscribe like comment let me know what you think of the content in the comments below and I'm gonna see you guys on the next video tomorrow because we are uploading every single day here so make sure you guys subscribe see y'all on the next video